Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Midweek Report. I'm AJ Monte, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. And you can see here that while we have been in an uptrend, you can see that we have a very well-pronounced pivot right at the top of the market right there. And that's one of the reasons why I called the official top last month. Now, I'm going to say this again and maybe a few times again in the future. A market top is not a market high. A market top is a topping pattern. And this is very, very similar to a triple top. You have three pivot points within close proximity of those highs. And so right now, even though we had this hammer candle today, we came within... 29 cents of that downside target, which we've been waiting for. The good news is for the buyers, or the bulls, I should say, is that today that gap officially filled. So 80% of the time gaps fill, and then after they fill 80% of the time, we generally get pivots going the opposite way. So I do think we'll see a little bit of a pivot but I'm not going crazy on the upside because tomorrow we've got the PPI numbers coming out at 8.30 a.m., the core PPI, and then the unemployment claims are coming out simultaneously. So if we get an uptick in unemployment, the markets are obviously not going to like that. We'll see the unemployment numbers are a lot easier to manipulate than the labor participation rate. But we'll see. We'll see how that affects the markets. And then, of course, next week, we've got the Fed meeting and an announcement regarding rates and the rate cuts. So if that does happen and we do get a cut, the big question is going to be how good is the cut going to be for the bulls or is it not good enough? And if they cut 25 basis points, the markets might actually be disappointed by that, might even sell off. If we get a 50 basis point cut, then what happens is you'll get a short-term rally, but that is the signal that we've been waiting for with regard to pivots. And if you've been following along, you'll know that every single time the Fed has pivoted, we wound up in a bear market. So I think eventually we're going to get that bear market that a lot of the bears are looking for. I'm on the low end expecting 18 months minimum. And then again, it could be a bear market that lasts 48 months. And that might sound extreme, but I'm just going to history and I'm looking at what we've seen in the past. And folks, I've been trading the markets a lot longer than some of you have been on planet Earth. So I've lived through a lot of these conditions and it feels awfully familiar especially in the bubbles in the back in the 2000 tech bubble and the financial crash of 2008. This is eerily similar. And yet I still look at the financial commentators and they still think we're going higher and higher. So I'm not telling you it's not or it can't. I'm just saying that we're positioning our members to make money on the way down. Today was a great day, especially for those of you that traded GME. I'm just going to do a shout out for those who were trading this one. The, they came out with earnings that gapped down and we had a put spread on. So we did really well. And now I'm just giving this as a freebie. I think GameStop could start to rally back up. So what we did is we got a bunch of cash and we took that cash and we paid down the cost basis. So now that we have a, a zero risk position in GameStop, if you're interested in learning how to do the dance with the market, like I often say, doing the dance, then come on over to Sticky Trades. We've got a 15-day free trial for you. You could sign up as a member and just come on over and plug yourself into our webinars. Tonight from 6 to 7, I've got the Rapid Fire Stock Analysis Session. And since last Wednesday, almost a third of the targets have already hit in five trading days. It's very unusual. We normally don't get that high of a percentage in the first five days. But our overall hit rate is over 81%, it's close to 82% this month. And so 82% accuracy on target hits is quite high. It's world class. And what I'm trying to do is show each and every one of our members how to do that for themselves. So I think we could get a bounce in DIA looking at IWM. You can see that we did hit my downside target here. 
perfectly. We got a hammer that is doubling as a bullish engulfing. So I think we could move back up to that moving average. I'm not going to put my target lines until Friday, but I'm just giving you a heads up that we could see a little bit of a bounce here. Again, depending on unemployment numbers and the PPI, we'll have to wait that one out. But short term, think a little bit higher. And then ultimately, I think we're going to zigzag our way right back down. So that's IWM looking at the Qs. Here's another one where we had this pivot, came close. Remember last Friday, after hitting this downside target, I extended the target. It looked like we were going to do that on Monday and then we did an about face. Now, this one is a little bit different because it's already pivoted up to the moving average. If the Qs gets a drop in volume tomorrow, we could see an about face on the CCI bringing that right back down. So this morning, what we did for our members is we took in some more cash and we rolled our short puts out to get that cash while the market was on the lows here. So that's working out very nicely as well. So stay tuned on Friday and I'll give you more of the longer term targets. Now looking at SPY, you can see that we came very close again today on the lows here, came very close to hitting that downside target, did an about face pivot. I think SPY is gonna move up as well. We'll see maybe even a close over that moving average. It might even go as high to test the resistance up here at 566. We have a buy signal forming on the stochastic right here. But again, I think it's all going to be very short lived and then eventually an about face lower. Taking a look at the VIX. All right. This is very, very interesting that we have a, a bullish candle on the VIX. It's known as an inverted hammer. Well, it's not textbook inverted hammer we needed that that shadow to be just a tad longer but whenever you see shadows above the candle in a down leg that tends to be bullish and so now the vix is sitting right on top of that 20 period moving average i'm not going to move that target on the vix i still think we're going back up to 2668 but you option trades out there Keep an eye on options expiration, which is a week from this Friday, because that will most likely add volatility in the market. We'll see that VIX start to move back up. So hopefully I'll get to see all of you at six o'clock tonight where we do the rapid fire stock analysis. Stay tuned, stay connected to Sticky Trades. Please like and subscribe. And of course, always comment. That helps us drive the algorithms and get us on the menu. You're doing us a great favor by making those comments there. And I appreciate that. I really do. So I'll talk to you on the next video. So long.